All right, everybody, so we're here with my father again. Now, this is gonna be an interesting one because we had crashed this bonanza that we're gonna talk about, and there's a video that we're gonna reference that you can go ahead and watch, and it'll tell you all about that crash. Um, so we're not gonna get into the specifics of that, but we'll talk a little bit about before that and a little bit after that, which was really some crazy flying that Dad had to do to get the airplane back. <laughs> um, so anyway, Dad, why don't you uh, go ahead. This is 1996 we're talking about. Okay. Yeah, the, I got rid of the uh, the Baron by then, and so I moved into the Bonanza, and so I did a lot of study on by what kind of Bonanza I wanted. I wanted to have tip tanks and and uh, and all that, and so there's a guy in uh, Goodland in, in Oklahoma had a nice Bonanza. I got some pictures of it and all that, and decided, okay, I'm going to buy it. And then um, we scheduled time for us to go down there, and, and Jeff calls me up and says, I think I want to go with you because, I don't know, I feel funny about this, uh, so... He and I both flew down to uh, Kansas, uh, to yeah, and uh, on Oklahoma, into Oklahoma, Oklahoma. Yeah. right. And then we, the guy who was selling the airplane, picked us up um, in his Bonanza, and then uh, we flew uh, to the airport where the airplane we were going to get is, and and um, we took it up for a test flight and all that. So everything was fine, and then so Jeff and I, uh, the next day, hopped into it and headed headed north. We took off, everything was fine. When we got up toward uh, Goodland, Kansas, and where we were going to fuel up at Goodland, uh, the winds were blowing like 30 knots across the runway. So I went up a little further to see if I could find a runway that the winds were lining up with. No, nope, we couldn't. So I ended up going back to Goodland and making a uh, crosswind landing at 30 knots, which Bonanza handled really well. We got her down great. And so the we overnighted there the next day, filled it up with 90 gallons of fuel, so the, the airplane was pretty heavy, and uh, that leads us into the big crash scene uh, when the engine quit at 900 feet, and you can go to the video and catch Yeah, we'll, we'll post the video right here, and you can click on it and go watch it. Okay. So then um, I call up Charlene and say, well, we crashed, and Jeff and I spent a night in a motel and then worked our way to Denver and took a... Another jet flight home. So the next six months, I flew in, in my little uh, uh, Grumman, knocking around, and uh, while the guys were overhauling the airplane and the engine, I had them overhaul it because the prop was damaged a bit. And so uh, I sent them an email explaining them to them that when you put the prop back on a hydraulic actuated prop. Well, this make, is a new prop now. A new prop, yeah. yeah. Make sure that you don't torque it to 400 foot pounds, torque it to 300. And um, anyway, they didn't pay attention to it, so they got the engine rebuilt. They put it together. This was in, um, let's see, I forget uh, the name of the city. But anyway, they uh, went up to test fly it after getting it all together, and naturally they had torqued the thing at 400 foot-pounds, and so they blew the, the uh, seal, which was metal, in the prop, and it all disintegrated, and the engine had to be torn down again. They were lucky the guy got it back on the ground in one piece. So they had to re-overhaul it again. It took another month and a half. And after that, uh, they got an email or a notification from, uh, from the engine manufacturer stating that all the cylinders they used have to be replaced because they had too much uh, sodium or something in them and they were cracking. So they had to overhaul it a third time. And so finally, in about after six months in September, um, it was ready for me to pick up. So after a day of work, I grabbed an airline down to... Uh, Denver, and uh, took a, a bus over to a southern another airport south of there, and met the guy who came from Dodge City in the airplane, and we took off, and I was flying the airplane and all that, and boy, the thunderstorms rolled in, and we we were fighting those things, and it was dark, and I'm not that much at night flying anyway. And finally, it was so bad we had to land short of there at um, um, Garden City, and. Uh, Everybody, we landed okay and went into the FBO and all the pilots were standing around there waiting for the storms to pass and um, with bigger airplanes too. And so about close to midnight, it cleared up a bit and so we got back in the Bonanza and headed for Dodge City and got in there a little bit after midnight and there was some like six inches of water on the runway. We flashed through that and uh, got on the ground okay and spent the night in the motel. The next day I went up and test flew the airplane and then headed north to, um, um, uh, let's see, I was going to go to, yeah, Rock Springs. Now, are you by yourself at this point yeah, now? Yeah, I was by myself. 
Took okay. off. Everyone but the day, the night before, you were with an, with another pilot. Yeah, with a guy who brought the airplane out from Dodge City, and we flew back to Dodge City. And so, um, anyway, on the way to uh, landed at um, at uh, Rock Springs, and on the landing, it blew out the right brake. So her, I'm thinking, oh crud! I gotta have to fix that brake. And I found a mechanic, came down, it's gonna cost you two thousand dollars to replace that that brake, and it's going to take four days to get the parts. I said, okay, forget it. I'm going to fly it back home with one brake. So the next day I took off, and uh, we're flying over the, the Blue Mountains, and um, one of my left fuel pumps quit, and so the engine quit over the top of the Blue Mountains for a few minutes, and I was able to switch the tanks and get everything running again, and ended up landing with one brake in Pendleton, Oregon, fueled up, and and the weather was getting a little bit crummy and took off from Pendleton okay and it had to scud run down the, the Columbia River Gorge and then up up north through that and got to uh, Crest okay and even with one brake landed okay and got back home. So that was uh, the trip with that with, with the <laughs> banana which is a beautiful little airplane. Um, and then part of the time I spent is, is upgrading the interior and um, Put it in new radios and uh, and then ultimately a GPS and now, all that. this is before the new radios here. This is when you first got at home. Yeah. No, these are the new radios there. Well, they don't, you don't have the, G, the, the GPS The GPS, the new GPS yet, but I did have the new interior yeah. in it, put that in there. I had a guy locally here put it all together. And um, so it's it was, uh, you know, really a clean little airplane now. And the engine was was, was, was really nice. And so, um, brand new. Yeah, brand new engine and and that prop. Oh, three and prop. And I forget where I'm here, but this is flying around the Puget Sound in the fog, <laughs> which it did for the next uh, oh few months and got a lot of time in on it with it. Um, this is down at Tacoma, where it goes over the Tacoma Bridge, and um, and then we're getting north towards Seattle and. And uh, that's part of Lake Taps there, and uh, coming in, and this is heading home. Good old northwest weather, and that's they're coming in here at a crest, making a final approach into there, and coming home down the taxiway, and so on. So, flying that old, you know, spent the next five six years flying that Bonanza. And uh, we recently took it up to Friday Harbor and uh, took some uh, working friends up there. Um, we took it to uh, Sun River on a regular basis. I've been flying to Sun River for years. And that time, particular one was to meet some other guys who were flying uh, uh, Bonanzas, the kind of Bonanza Association, and then uh, on to Roach Harbor. And, and then I flew into Medford and a lot of places on business because at that time I'd started a consulting company. I had about 40 people in my company. and. So I was using the Bonanza to fly back and forth to work uh, on that. I don't remember where I'm at now. Oh, yeah. And then, um, let's see. Yeah. Um, we flew into um, Moses Lake, if you know where Moses Lake is, and I had a consulting job at the airport there, and I had a hard start. I had to get a, somebody to come and start the thing. I don't know, sometimes it, the... the that newer engine system that they installed in that thing would, would, would flood and make it hard to start, but eh, that was okay, and then uh, we fly all over for the So I spent the next year or so all over the place in that Bonanza, Roach Harbor, and Moses Lake, and you know, on business and so forth, up through um, year 2000, and um, I'm trying to think, um, I burned about 17 and a half gallons an hour and doing it about 100 and 155 with the Bonanza, which is not too bad. And pretty nice airplane, and it had the six tanks in it, um, which was get sort of complicated because uh, even though with all that fuel on board, you could fly to Mexico City from Seattle, it, um, it was complicated in the sense you had to pump down the tip tanks into the main tank and, or, and the auxiliary tanks into the various main tanks and switch them back and forth and all that. So you had to pay attention or you're going to run out of gas. No, it was yeah, definitely uh, yeah. a lot of paying attention to what you were doing. Yeah. And so right by the year 2000, and Jeff and I decided to take the Bonanza, I think it was probably the second time, but 
all the way to Oshkosh, and our first stop, of course, was at, at Great Falls, and that's, that's where this picture is. And uh, as we were gassing up, and then uh, here we are, and we always like to um, land in the what they call the North 40 at Oshkosh, where you can camp out beside the airplane, and that's Jeff with his camera, and our little tent beside the airplane, and um, it, of course Oshkosh is, is um, really great, and we stop at Rockford on the way, and then uh, I think uh, we went to the um, Bonanza Association, had a little get-together at Rockford, and we were BSing with all the other Bonanza owners and so forth, so, and then went on into, into Oshkosh. Um, this is the North 40 early on, but I like to get there early so we can make sure we get a good spot. Way less traffic, too, so if you're going to fly in there, yeah. go in on a Thursday, and you don't have to deal with the melee, you can watch the melee instead. Yeah, exactly. That's the best fun is watching everybody come in and crash and all that. And there's Jeff over there. We had a cover over the airplane I bought from a co company in California. This is of the North 40 now full. Beautiful weather so far uh, in Oshkosh, though we always expect to get a thunderstorm from time to time. And um, the airplane was running great. This is uh, just different things going on in Oshkosh, which is uh, recommended. I've been there eight or ten times. A um, bunch of Airplanes doing a, a air show there, um, military truck taking off and landing. Um, of course, we love that thing. I'm not sure what we're up to now, but I'm just taking the pictures and uh, riding down toward the where the uh, older airplanes are, the Stinsons and all those in the uh, southern portion of the air, air show. Forget what that is. Um, this is inside. Uh, what just said? You remember what this was inside the? Um, I'm trying to remember what that was, what airplane that was. Yeah, it's got bunks and stuff in it. It's a military aircraft of some kind. And um, it's like a Connie constellation. Yeah, That's it could a, have been uh, a Connie. that is a constellation. You can see the tip tanks on yeah, it. Isn't that cool? Yeah. 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 That's what it is. And then uh, took a bunch of pictures of twins because I'm an horse. It was in a three ten fan anyway, and uh, just. I don't know. That's the note. That's the that's a wheel well of that Cessna three ten. Yeah, that was boy, that's really pictures. clean, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> and then I took a bunch of pictures. See this this particular Bonanza had these stabilizers on it in the back, and um, because I wanted to see if I could make the airplane not wiggle so much. And um, anyway. And it's a form of yaw and the, dampening. And then, of course, in Oshkosh, the thunderstorms come in. We always get some of those, and it's uh, kind of rainy and fun. And and uh, there we all are. Oh, yeah, you so can have just absolute downpours, monsoon winds. Um, some of the videos we have, we've got Oshkosh videos that are on our channel that you can watch, and there's some pretty cool stuff in there with that. A couple brief little shots. Yeah. Now, it looked like a lot of bananas cups. had those, yeah. so anyway, I'm just going to go through this real quick. And uh, here we are on our way back. I think I stopped at... Um, that looks like uh, Mile City. Yeah, Mile City. Gas up, usually about halfway in. Auburn. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, I had an ignition coach into, into Tacoma, Narrows, and then, because they don't have a it should approach into Auburn, and then I had a scud run to get to Auburn, and then yeah. I'm picking the airplane up the next Yeah, that was, that was coming back from Oshkosh. Yeah. Yeah, remember that's when we were stuck in Wenatchee for a while? Yeah. And then did an instrument letdown into Tacoma Narrows, and then pulled off from there and went into Auburn. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Anyway, there's the engine of the, of the old Bonanza, and it's pretty decent shape. New, that airplane was really pristine. Yeah. And there's the, the new instrument new, panel. Yeah, and the new GPS there. Yeah. Yeah, that thing had unbelievable range, that is for sure. Amazing range on that thing. Yeah. It was a great airplane. I miss it. Had to throw over control like the old Baron did. And um Yeah, that was a 1955 Bonanza with heavy modifications, long third window, it had the Basically, the Baron Vinyl, you know, uh, V35 vent system up top there, which yeah. is what that is. And it had a ski rack behind there. You couldn't see yep. it. But. Ski rack, um, one-piece windshield. Yeah. 
Uh, One of the things you found out about it later when I did a weight on it, it was 250 pounds overweight. So that's one of the reasons why the thing was kind of heavy duty getting off the ground, it caused me to lose 50 pounds so I, personally, so I could get more uh, useful load out of the Bonanza. Yeah, it could have used a, a, like an IO 470. Yeah. <laughs> it had an E225, 225 horse, but 260 horse would have been nice. Yeah, it was, anyway, great airplane. We, uh, when we flew to Oshkosh the first time on the Bonanza, I know we, after that, we went and flew all the way down to Greenville, Mississippi, uh, where my wife's family was, and visited with them for one day. And then we loaded up the 90 gallons of fuel and headed north all the way to uh, Rock Springs. We're seven and a half hours in the air to Rock Springs. That's, that bonanza could go a long time in the air, a lot longer than our kidneys could. And so... Um, then we made it to Rock Springs, and the next time we went to Oshkosh, uh, a couple years later, um, it was uh, another great trip, and and uh, Garden City, and then um, from Denver, and then so forth. So that's this trip here. I think we took in. Um, let me get my notes out here. Yeah, it was in year two thousand, and uh, Jeff and I flew there in the, in the old bowl and. And, um, yeah, continue to be flying all the time. I use it for, for again, for business. Um, went to places in Beaverton and Oregon and return and, um, many times at Bremerton, uh, Mimbinganville and Friday Harbor, you know, with friends and Ocean Shores and Tillamook and so forth. So finally, by the year 2002, um, I was getting ready to get back into the twin thing again. And because um, the company was making good money, so I could afford it. And then we uh, did one last shot to Oshkosh, and uh, on in 2002, Mile City, La Crosse, and into Oshkosh, and then um, uh, we had to stop at Huron, in Maryland, you know, in North Dakota, to get fueled up because um, we had a huge headwinds that year then into Wenatchee and then so forth. So, And then it came out in year 2002. Um, I started looking at a 310 and that'll come up next time. But uh, finally, um, um, I had to sell a Bonanza and I had the last flight on uh, January 2003 to the new owner. And by the way, that, and he took off of the airplane and. and number of years later, I think it's on our site too, uh, that the guy who was going to buy the airplane from the, my owner, the guy who bought it from me, was uh, taken off with a, an instructor out of Everett, I think it was. Yeah, Payne Field. Oh, Payne Field. And uh, they got into some kind of trouble, had an engine problem, and ended up crashing into the, into the ground. And uh, the uh, instructor, who was pretty old, 80 maybe, he was killed, and the pilot was injured pretty bad. Or was it the other way around? Like, no, that's no. You got it. And then it was. Uh, they found out that so you had put the shoulder harnesses in the airplane. Yes. And the pilot that was being instructed had his shoulder harnesses on, and the instructor did not. And the instructor uh, died due to head trauma from hitting right. the instrument panel. They actually had um, a loss of power right off the departure into the runway, and so they were uh, maybe maybe a thousand feet off the end of the runway and went into these kind of like sagebrush yeah. um and it did total the airplane um but minor injuries to the the pilot being instructed so it just you know the shoulder harnesses are just critical and they're very important and it was really unfortunate when we saw that because uh just to find out that that gentleman had been killed and all because he did not have his shoulder harnesses on if he would have he, he would have walked away Absolutely. I mean, I was I put in shoulder harnesses and on, in the, in the Baron that I had prior to the to the Bonanza and, uh, and the, as soon as I got the Bonanza, I got installed in that. And later on, when I bought the new 310, I uh, had it installed in that too, because you read many aircraft accidents where they're very survivable, but the people get injured bad or and if they don't have the shoulder harnesses on, it bashes your head into the instrument panel. So. That was a big motivation for me to make sure I had shoulder harnesses and always wore them too. 
Yeah, really important. All right, well, hey, thanks, Dad. Okay.